I'm gonna live so God can use me anytime, anyway. I'm gonna live so God can use me anytime. Good morning and welcome to Conversations in Faith. I'm Pastor Roy Backus and with me throughout this Advent season of 2015 is Pastor Jerry Baker, uh, the Associate Pastor at First Presbyterian Church here in Morris. This year we are centering our Conversations in Faith around the foundations of thankfulness in our lives. Uh, We talked about our thankfulness for the family of God. A couple weeks ago, I think it was hope was what we talked about and last week was peace. And this week, uh, this third week of Advent, we're thankful for God's gift of joy through the community of faith. Um, Pastor Jerry, we talked about joy a little bit when we were coming over here, driving and talking about it, joy in our lives and in the Advent season. Uh, When you think about joy, what do you think about during the Advent season? I think in the, uh, in one case, you talk, you maybe you think about and the joy in your life of uh, I don't want to say a physical reality but but more just yeah the the emotions the how you're feeling at the moment so there's a an element of it that's very worldly and definitely related to where you are and how you are what's going on in what's this, going on? <clears throat> this time of the year pardon me this time of the year well, especially this that, time of year yeah, yeah. And we, we hear the christmas carols and the joy that they sing and uh, the whole that whole concept of uh, new birth and we think about it in, in, in the messiah being born but in general in society imagine about a child being born in that um but uh, a lot of that you know we look at external joy and internal joy, right? Or external happiness, internal happiness, internal joy. I don't know. Uh, uh, the you know during this time of the year too, we talk about the blue Christmas that we have for folks who had uh, lost relatives and friends and uh, who've had real tragedies during the last year. Uh, and now this is that first Christmas when they are without those loved ones. Right. Right. And. You know, often there's that sense of loss and that uh, sense that uh, things won't be the same anymore because mm-hmm. you're missing that that person, and they're not. They're not in a lot of ways, of course. Right. Uh, and so, and so for some, this isn't a joyous time. Right. You know, because they missing what they're missing in their life uh, and these times cause them to think about those things so when we think about the community of faith and joy what you know how does that tie together the the church our extended christian family and joy uh well, you know i i grew up in the church <clears throat> so i had the most wonderful times and experiences of my life have been in the church and then really the worst experiences of my life have been in the church too and things aren't always easy in the church. Sometimes things really fall apart. Uh, people can get really ornery, and uh, and sad things happen just in living sometimes, too, that nobody's responsible for. It just happens in that time. And I think of the times when I've really been joyous and happy and rejoicing, and then I think of times that uh, were very, very sad, sometimes that almost crushed me within the church and the way things happened. Um, but there again, I come back and look at the the church as the place where, where the Lord is present in a special way because Jesus said, where two or more are gathered in my name, I'm in the midst of them. That's He's the glue that holds us together and, and, and brings us together that way. So I think about <clears throat> that gift that the Lord gives us in one another even in the hard times. Right, and that was what you and I were talking about, the kind of the other side of joy. Mm -hmm. That is more than just this uh, temporal uh, wishing well or for good health and good uh, feelings and emotions at the time, but there's that, the other side of of biblical joy. Sure. um, Which talks about uh, the joy found in God. 
and, right. the, and the joy found in worshiping God and the joy in the um, assurance of his presence and mm-hmm. his um, his workings in the world. Well, past, I, present, and, and future. There you go. And you know? when we think about the Christmas story itself and the different times that, uh, like, the angel appeared to uh, Mary and Joseph and the shepherds and the trip that the wise men took, the magi took, uh, uh, those are all events that include the element of joy. Uh, well, Mary, you know, the angel appears to her and speaks to her. Um, and... Uh, I think we saw the best example of that Sunday morning at the children's <laughs> play <laughs> when the angel said, Mary, you're going to have a baby and it's going to be from God. And she said, what? And Mary says, oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, and, and, and Mary does rejoice in the Lord, but there must have been some ambiguity there at that point to be a, a teenage mother, single mother, and to be engaged to Joseph and um, and yet the joy of knowing that God is working within her life uh, sort of uh, overflows in her life. And when she goes to visit then Elizabeth, John the Baptist's mom, her cousin, uh, John the Baptist leaps in the womb of his mother, Elizabeth. And then Elizabeth has that beautiful praising God uh, for the Messiah to be present uh, in their midst. Right. So her joy was deeper than, you know, the joy that she had who never thought she would have a child. Right. And for Elizabeth, and now she's is is due. And um and then at seeing Mary coming and knowing by that Mary is carrying the Messiah. Absolutely. And, and so it's that deeper joy that goes again into God's working in yes. the world and into reality. I can't imagine what it was like for Joseph for the angel to come to him in a dream and to announce to him, hey, it's okay, you don't have to put Mary away privately so that you know, the, the child within her is from the Lord and it's okay to marry her. And, of course, Joseph responded Sunday at the worship service. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that's what he said this Sunday. <laughs> this <laughs> but. Sunday, you know. <laughs> but, but I thought, uh, but that's... You know, to be visited uh, um, and have assurance from God that what God wants in your life is okay and you know what it is. That must have been a, a, a phenomenal experience for Joseph to fill him with joy as well as some trepidation knowing that the rest of his life, married life with Mary and with his son, would probably be a conversation piece for the community right. around them. But it's also something we can take from that is that in the midst of, of, of our daily living, mm-hmm. you know, the things we face, the the, the decisions we have to make, the, the choices the that um, sometimes we don't, although we don't know how it's all going to project in the end, yes. that sometimes we can still find joy in what's happening in the moment. Right, and uh, and it's in our trust that God will work things through. I think it's interesting that you know we can talk about the the angel that appeared to the uh, the magi or to the, well the shepherds, the shepherds which angels right, the, you know in in in, in yeah. behold I bring you good tidings of great joy which right. shall be to all people for unto yeah. you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord right. you know Messiah who is Christ the Lord uh, at at that point. It's interesting that in these events that we have with Joseph and Mary and and the shepherds, at least, here God is speaking directly to them. They hear God's message, mm-hmm. and in here and God's message to their lives has some ambiguity in the situation, in the setting, but at the same time, very positive. For there's a deep joy within them, for they because they've heard from God, they've listened to God's message, and they have taken part, and they uh, do say, "Oh, okay," <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and they go, "That's your message for me." Uh, and of course, the Magi they read they read the signs, mm-hmm. and so in reading the signs, they they uh, interpret God's will or know that something's happening, and then they come and the. Uh, uh, religious leaders of those day that day and time then speaks to them and gives them the message of Bethlehem in the birth the Messiah will be born there and so they hear the message in another way and I think that message when we hear from God that we 
that we can experience that joy, that deep-hearted, deep-seated joy of being one with God, which changes our lives and our outlook and our, gives us that ability to say yes to God. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I see that in the, in all the stories around the the birth of the Lord, of the, the Messiah. Well, and then you also said that um, you were talking about the verses in Philippians. Oh, yes. That we'll be preaching uh-huh. on this Sunday. And, right. Uh, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, again. I say rejoice. rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all people. Right. And that's really, uh, that's interesting to have joy and gentleness, isn't it? That's sort of an interesting uh, uh, rub of, mm-hmm. of words against each other. But yes, that rejoicing in the Lord. Uh, sometimes I think in worship we don't always rejoice enough. I agree. We get we get sophisticated, and we try not to uh, stand out too much, and we try to fit in, or you know, sometimes we get too worried in in worship in general. Uh, we don't rejoice enough, and we do need to rejoice more. I think in the Lord. Um, well, where else do you think the joy, you know, comes from in our lives, or or the way we can apply that? Or how we confuse other things with joy. I think in my life, one of the biggest things was learning to, and I'm still working on it, of course, is is learning to see God at work no matter what's going on. To Hmm. see outside of, you know, my immediate range of vision. And that that has given me a peace and a joy um, because it's that it's that reminder that um, this is only for a time mm-hmm. and there's a lot more time beyond this yes and um, and so to not uh, always you, you want to cherish your moments and yes. you want to celebrate and, and be happy and in, 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 in the moments that you have but you need to always remember there's more beyond this. I, I, yes. And and even in the difficult times and the hard times, knowing that, that time is in the hands of God. Right. And in the good times, you know, you're, you're in those too, but that there's even more because the Scripture tells us God wants to lavish His love upon us. That's true. I mean, and that's Amen. a word we don't use. We don't use that word a lot. And to, lavish, to, to no. think about what it means, you know, just totally soak us and cover us and just... I like that. You know, have us totally wrapped up. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's a joy. <laughs> yeah, I think sometimes we confuse outside happiness with inside joy. Absolutely. And right. uh, and so... Uh, Yes, I think sometimes that I've when I've felt truly felt the Lord's joy in my heart uh, were quiet times of of just reflection or just uh, just recognizing how much God has blessed me and family and people around us, or in the midst of difficulties, knowing that the Lord really is in charge. Right. Ultimately, um, those those are those times when I've really I'm really thankful. For, for the God we have in Jesus Christ and as he works in our lives. Mm-hmm. Um, there we go. Well, our time is about up. Did you know that? It goes quickly It sometimes. goes quickly, doesn't it, when we're talking about the mm-hmm. Lord. I want to thank you for taking this time to listen during this Advent season. And we pray that you've been challenged to think about faith and relationship with God in some new ways. And we are always open to discuss and learn about your life. Uh, next week, we'll speak of the uh, truth of thankfulness given through our lives in the people that God has given us, and we'll be talking about God's love. So for Conversations in Faith, and until next week, we thank you again for listening. This is Pastor Roy Backus. And Pastor Jerry Baker. The First Presbyterian Church in Morris. The Lord bless you. I'm going to live so God.